Petri Wine brings you... Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invites you to listen to Dr. Watson tell about an exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. And I've got something to talk about, too. Now that the poultry shortage is over and you can get chicken again, you ought to treat yourself to the best meal in the world. Fried chicken, southern style, accompanied by a chill glass of Petri California Sauterne. Me, oh my, is that something. You know, Petri Sauterne is a wonderful mealtime wine. It's a white wine, the color of pale, pale gold. And Petri Sauterne is delicate in flavor, sort of subtle and kind of intriguing. Well, just wait till you taste it. You'll really love it with that fried chicken. Oh, and I'll tell you something else. It's wonderful with fish. If you haven't tried fish or any kind of seafood, together with Petri Sauterne, well, I hate to say this, but you don't know, folks. You just don't know. So how about finding out? Just pick up a bottle of Petri Sauterne on your way home tomorrow. It's a Petri wine, so you know it's good. And now let's see if our old friend Dr. Watson's expecting. Hmm. He's out on the patio. Dr. Watson? Sit out here this evening, my boy. Oh, swell idea, Doctor. It certainly is a beautiful night. It certainly is. Go up a chair and make yourself comfortable. That's it. Do you uh, care for some of my tobacco? <laughs> I think I'll stick to a cigarette, thanks. Well, Doctor, all ready for tonight's adventure? Yes, Mr. Bartell, I'm all ready. And a strange story it was. A very strange story. How did it begin? Stormy December night in 1900 with the rain pelting against the Baker Street windows... Or perhaps with you and the great Sherlock Holmes rattling along in a cab beside the foggy waterfront chasing some desperate criminal. <laughs> you make quite a good story tell yourself, Mr. Bartell. No, no, no. The adventure I'm going to tell you took place many, many thousands of miles afield from our Baker Street headquarters. To be exact, in the Indian city of Parbutipur, about 200 miles north of Calcutta. It must have been a mighty important case that made you both travel that far. It certainly was, my boy, yes. It was an answer in the, in the summer of the... 1894, I remember, that Holmes received an urgent summons from the Maharaja of Parbutipur. After five weeks at sea, we reached Calcutta, and a few days later found ourselves on the veranda of our hotel in Parbutipur. As we sat there talking to the Maharaja's brother, Robert Singh, we could hear the faint throb of native drums and the haunting wail of an Indian lute coming from the bazaar. And so, gentlemen, I thought that before I took you over to my brother's palace, I would tell you something of the problems that beset him. An excellent idea, Mr. Singh. Uh, yes, indeed, sir, particularly as you've just told us that your brother, the Maharaja, is not in the best of health. Uh, just so, Dr. Watson. Interviews tie him, and in any case, his command of the English language is not so extensive as mine. And now, sir, the problem, if you please. As to the exact problem, Mr. Holmes, I am not completely informed. My dear brother has not seen fit to confide his entire troubles, even to me. In fact, until your arrival yesterday, I did not even know that you had been sent for. But I can tell you that his worries are centered on the safety of the white elephant of Parbutipur. White elephant? Excuse me. But possibly you are not aware that white elephants actually do exist. Oh, yes, though I understand that they're extremely rare. Oh, extremely, Mr. Am I right in thinking that in the East a white elephant is considered sacred? Quite right. Pray continue, sir. Well... In 1750, the first white elephant was presented to my great-great-grandfather, and with it came a legend. The legend that the Maharaja's rule would be happy, healthy, and successful only as long as the elephant flourished. If the animal were to die, then the reign would come to an end, and the Maharaja was doomed to a sudden death. Mr. Singh, who was responsible for the origin of this legend? Oh, a good and wise man who traveled from the mountains beyond Nepal. He it was who brought... The first elephant to my great great grandfather. And how has the legend worked out in actual practice, sir? Its prophecies have come frighteningly true, Dr. Watson. Oh? The first elephant was killed by his mahout, his own keeper, after my illustrious ancestor had dismissed the man for incompetence. A week later, my great great grandfather was himself killed in a native uprising. 
And so it has gone on, gentlemen, since then. Amazing, amazing. When the elephants have died, and they have always died, the Maharaja of Vaputipur has died a violent death soon after. And as each new Maharaja has succeeded to the title, the wise man from the beyond the mountains has appeared, and with him, a new sacred white elephant. He last appeared four years ago when my brother inherited the title. Oh, but it can't still be the same man, oh, sir. Why not, Doctor? Well, <laughs> I mean to say that it'd make him a couple of hundred years old. Mm, a trifle less, I fancy, Doctor. Oh, really, my dear sir. It seems to me your story is the wrong way round. Men don't live to such an age, whereas elephants are noted for their length of life. And that's true, Watson, but apparently not the sacred white ones of Papa de Poor. Uh, Mr. Singh, uh, in the event that uh, your brother's death, who would become the Maharaja? <laughs> I should, Mr. Holmes. Oh, I can see what you are thinking, sir. The next in line to succeed to the title would have an excellent motive for wishing the animal dead. Well, the logic is inescapable. But the thought had no personal implications, I assure you. Well, I'm very anxious to see this fabulous animal. The sacred white elephant is never seen except at the yearly festival that celebrates another anniversary of the Maharaja's rule. So the animal is only seen once a year, eh? Yes, Mr. Holmes. And when is the next anniversary, may I ask? In two weeks' time. No, our arrival seems to have coincided very nicely with the ceremony. Yes, Watson, a fact that I'm sure is not coincidental. Well, Mr. Singh, I'm very glad that you told us the legend of the sacred white elephant, and now I suggest that you take us to the palace. I'm most anxious to make the Maharaja's acquaintance. <laughs> This is the council chamber, gentlemen. If you will wait here a moment, I will go and see if my brother is well enough to receive you. Very well, sir. Oh, my soul, Holmes, I'm not easily impressed. But this palace is absolutely staggering in its magnificence. Yes, it does rather take one's breath huh? away, doesn't it? It does. This floor is of the finest marble. And unless I'm much mistaken, that magnificent rug is a genuine Bacara. Yes, by Jove, it is. I can swear that the staircase we mounted a moment ago had railings of solid gold. You did, old chap. It is a country of paradoxes, where opulence beyond the dreams of Midas rubs shoulders with the direst poverty. And yet, looking at a palace like this, it's not hard to see why India is called the brightest jewel in the diadem of the British Empire. Good Lord, what, what's that? That is an elephant trumpeting. Oh, yes, yes of course. Uh, do you suppose it's the sacred white one? Undoubtedly. You will recall the Maharaja's brother told us it's the only one at the palace. Cheers. Is an odd sound. Yeah, it's a very comforting one. The animal seems to be in the best of health. Who waits in the Maharaja's council room? Who gracious me? You, you gave me a start. I didn't hear you come in. And my friend and I are waiting for an audience with His Highness. No one can hold audience with the Maharaja. Please to leave. Now look here, my good fellow. Watson, I'm please. please to leave. Uh, Watson. What? Oh. We've traveled 12,000 miles to see the Maharaja, sir, at his request. In any case, his brother is with him now arranging an audience. I am Mada, the Maharaja's physician and chief counselor. And I tell you, you cannot hold audience today. And I tell you that I haven't the slightest intention of leaving the palace without seeing him. You defy authority of mother? Saila! Azu? Tai bloke, lay jow. Now, I warn you that if I have any... Oh, I'm glad you're back, Mr. Singh. This fellow told us that we couldn't see your brother. And furthermore, he seems to labor under the misapprehension that he can have us thrown bodily out of the palace. Mother, you do not understand. These are the gentlemen my brother wishes to see... From England, he has sent for them. It was against my counsel they were summoned. No good will come of this. Follow me, gentlemen. My brother, the Maharaja, will see you now. But please do not stay with him too long. He is far from well. Mr. Sherlock Holmes... Dr. Watson, I'm so happy you have arrived here safely. It was great imposition to ask you to travel so far. Oh, not at all, sir. I only hope we can prove of material assistance to you. Ranji? Yes, Robert? I wish you would permit Dr. Watson to examine you. No, just was I about to suggest myself, sir. In fact, I, I brought my medical bag along just in case. Uh, Mada would not approve. Mada not believe in... Occidental medicine. I do not trust Mada. I do not think he wishes you to get well. Please, Ranji, let the doctor examine you. Very well. But you not 
tell now, Madre. And now, um, what seems to be the, the trouble, Your Highness? Uh, my, my eyes, they torture me. Night and day, they torture me. Yes, I notice they seem very inflamed. Now, let me take a look at them. Oh, oh, mm, yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, open oh. them a, a little wider, please, sir. Ah. I throb, burn, night and day. Night, day, burn. Mm, the color is distinctly reddened. However, this isn't anything very, very serious, sir. What you're suffering from is a case of what we call conjunctivitis. What you do relieve pain, Doctor? Oh, some eye drops will give you relief in no time, sir. I have some here in, in, in my bag. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Perhaps medicine will help. Yes, yes, I'm sure it will, sir. Here you are, in a, this small bottle and an eyedropper. Uh, this is, is an eyedropper. Uh, just put a few drops in the corner of each eye, and I'm sure that you'll, you'll get some relief in no time at all. Thank you, Dr. Watson. You think there is nothing seriously wrong, Doctor? Mother gave it as his opinion that my brother's eyesight was in serious danger. Well, pardon my saying so, I think it more likely that my medical knowledge exceeds his. I can assure you there's nothing serious to the matter with your brother's eyes, sir. I'm happy you say so. <sighs> now you will please excuse me while I take medication and rest a little. We discuss my problems later. Quarters already prepared for you in palace. You do not mind, Mr. Holmes? Not at all, sir. Though in the interim I should like to employ my time to the pool by inspecting your sacred white elephant. No. No, that I cannot allow. I must talk to you first. I think, sir, you will do well to give me permission to see the animal. I already have my suspicions as to your reason for bringing me here, and it will be best if I'm completely informed when we have our discussion. Very well. Can do no harm. Here. Take ring. Show ring to Sucro. He's keeper of animal. Sucro will let you into elephant house. When he see ring. Thank you, sir. And please rest comfortably. I'm sure that your worries are nearly at an end. Come on, Watson. Well, well, they told us this was the elephant house. Why in thunder doesn't the keeper open the door? I imagine because his mind is preoccupied with music. Knock again, old fellow, will you? Uh-huh. He heard us that time. Yeah, about time. He must have been knocking here for five or six minutes. Alarm, sir. He am on him. Tadahati dekni koasti. Tum dekni ne sekta. Sekta. Maharaja said, kum koasti matik dio. Mm-hmm. Both out yourself. Eat her out. Say, Holmes, the Maharaja's ring certainly seemed to do the trick. He didn't want to let us in until you showed it to him, oh, did he? Good and faithful <laughs> servant, our friend Sukro. Kier, Kutai! Kier! Ati, Pagir! Pagir! Kasamapik! Nezutai, sir! What's happened, Holmes? A white elephant has disappeared, Watson. Disappeared? That's ridiculous. Elephants don't just disappear. Kier, Kariga, sir! Maharaja Sad Kibolo. Kali, Umkibolo. Potacha, sir! Potacha! Where's he going? I told him to go to the Maharaja and give him the news. He was to tell it to no one else. But, Holmes, this is ridiculous. We heard the animal trumpeting here less than half an hour ago. How can an elephant be spirited away in that amount of time? That's what we have to find out, my dear fellow. I've often heard of the Indian rope trick. Now we have a first-hand opportunity of solving a new mystery, the problem of the disappearing elephant. Holmes, this is possible. Spend half an hour searching this elephant house. After all, an elephant isn't exactly insignificant. I doubt if you're going to find it under those boards in the corner over there. True, Watson, but nonetheless, there are interesting clues to be observed. Clues? What clues? Come over here, old chap. Bloodstains? Great Scott, you're not suggesting that's elephant's blood? It's hard to say, though I would venture the opinion that it would require the blood of several human corpses to produce an equivalent amount of blood. In any case, you will notice that the stains are dried and old. Hello? That must be the elephant keeper back from the palace. Now, Watson. It's Mara, the Maharaja's physician. Mr. Holmes, 
Dr. Watson, at once you must come back to the palace. What long, sir? It is the Maharaja. Death has come to him. Dead? Great heavens. Exactly what happened? Sukro, keeper of the elephant, came to the Maharaja. He said he had a most important message to deliver. He had. I told him to deliver it. Then what happened? A few moments later, I heard cries. I went to the Maharaja's room and found him in delirium. He was saying about the elephant having disappeared. His brother and I tried to give comfort to him, but we could do nothing. His breathing became more and more labored. Finally, it stopped altogether. So the doom of Pambodipur is fulfilled once again. The elephant is gone and the Maharaja's reign is ended. Come on. We must go to the palace. Yes, I must examine the body at once. You're certain it was a natural death, Mr. Mudder? Positive, Mr. No Holmes. symptoms of poisoning, for example? Mr. Holmes, I have read some of your sensational stories in which obscure deaths are attributed to a, to a subtle oriental poison unknown to Western science. I can assure you that if the Maharaja has been poisoned, it has been caused by no poison known to me. When did he last eat? Over uh, eight hours ago. Well, possibly died of shock, home, shock and hysteria. When he knew that the elephant had vanished. Yes, it's possible, but it's murder just the same. Murder? Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Because whoever caused the elephant to disappear did it with the deliberate intention of ending the Maharaja's reign. A diabolical plot, and one that I intend to overcome before this day is out. Dr. Watson's story will continue in just a second, so all I'm going to say is... If you like a swell red wine with your dinner, well, then you should know about Petri California Burgundy. Petri Burgundy is a rich, hearty red wine that's just wonderful with hamburger and beef stew and pot roast and chops and just about any meat or meat dish you can think of. And, of course, if you can get hold of a steak or a prime rib, well, then you've just got to serve that with Petri Burgundy. Petri Burgundy is a swell mealtime wine. The best friend a good meal ever had. No kidding. And now back to tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure, The Case of the Vanishing Elephant. Tell me, Doctor, did you examine the Maharaja's body? Yes, of course I did, Mr. Bartell. Holmes was convinced that the Maharaja had been murdered, but I could find no trace of foul play. After my examination, I joined Holmes in our quarters, and I gave him my opinion. Found out anything? Mm, looks like natural death to me, Holmes. No traces of poison? None that I could see. Of course, it's hard to be certain without an autopsy. Did you suggest one? Yes, but the new Maharaja won't hear of it. It's against their religion, apparently. Yes, I was afraid of that. Meantime, I've been conducting a cross-examination of some of the palace servants. Oh? What do you find out? Principally that all of them heard the elephant trumpeting this morning. Did any of them suggest how the animal might have been smuggled out to the palace ground? They insisted that such a feat would be impossible without their knowledge. Well, what's our next move, Holmes? To interrogate the one person who I'm sure can give us the true story of the elephant's disappearance, its keeper. Remember, we haven't seen him since he took the message to the palace. I suggest we return to the elephant house and have a, a persuasive talk with him. Mm, this must be the house, the only one that's near the elephant pen. Ramshackle looking place, isn't it? Extremely. Sucro! Sucro! Don't tell me that he's vanished too. <laughs> this is beginning to get on my nerves. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. Sucro! I think under the circumstances we'll take the liberty of entering. Sucro! Look, Holmes. Look on the floor. <sighs> We're too late. Good Lord. What a horrible sight. His throat's been cut. Obviously, another murder. He knew the secret of the vanishing elephant. Let's have a look around. Ah. Uh-huh. Sucro was quite a, quite a musician. Look at this weird assortment of instruments. Native lute. Well, we heard him playing that today as we approached the elephant house. What's this? Looks like a sort of giant megaphone. It's a musical instrument of some kind. Observe the mouthpiece here. Let's see what kind of noise it makes. Great Scott. The instrument sounds exactly like, like an elephant trumpeting. Of course. Thumbs, Carl, why didn't I think of this before? Come on, Watson, back to the palace as fast as your legs can carry you. The mystery is solved. <laughs> Mr. 
You say you have solved the problem of the missing elephant, Mr. Yes, sir. Holmes? And also the cause of your brother's death and Sucro's murder. Indeed. That is very important news. Uh, won't you both sit down, please? Oh, thank you, sir. I can't. Uh, please proceed, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. At first, the elephant did not vanish today. The beast must have died a natural death months ago. All that happened today was that I discovered its absence. Are you suggesting that my brother knew the beast was dead? I am, sir. But he was afraid to publish the news. He knew that his rule would fall into a state of chaos if the fact were known. You yourself, sir, have told us how strong is the native belief in this legend. Oh, how did he dispose of the elephant? Unobtrusively over a period of time. The bloodstains in the elephant house would indicate that the animal had been cut up into disposable fragments, which could be removed by the faithful sucro without attracting suspicion. All this time, though, the elephant horn was blown at suitable intervals to indicate that the sacred animal was still alive. But if the Maharaja knew the beast was dead, why did he die of shock when he received the news? I think the answer to that question, Dr. Watson, would be that my brother died of shame when he knew that his imposture had been discovered. Oh, oh, oh. A little far sir, if you don't mind my saying so. Now, I'm certain the reason your brother brought me to your country was to reveal that imposture to me. Knew the day was coming soon... And he must show the elephant to his people. The festival would have been held in two weeks' time, I think you told us, sir. I imagine that he wanted me to devise a method of smuggling a new white elephant into the palace grounds before that time. Tell me, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, why did my brother die today? Because he was murdered. Just as Sucro was murdered later. Murdered? How, Holmes? Oh, very ingeniously. Uh, by poison, but not, as you might expect, by any subtle eastern poison. No, one of the uh, most recent of western poisons was used. A poison unknown to oriental science. Delirium, followed by a strangulated breathing, is highly typical of the newly discovered poison, hyoscyamine. But he hadn't eaten for eight hours. True, Watson, but you see this, um, hyoscyamine was administered to, uh, an eyedropper? Good heavens, an eyedropper. Huh? The... Poison penetrates with unusual ease through the membranes of the eyes, if you will recall. Yes, you're right, but Joey does. It must have been that physician fellow, Ma Mardo, whatever his name is. No, my dear chap. Uh, this has been a case of confusions. Let's do a little clear thinking now, shall we? You see, uh, we were deceived by the apparent sequence of events. We discovered the elephant missing and thought that fact had caused the Maharaja's death. Well, as his murder was quite a separate matter, the poison must have been placed in the eye drops while we were in the elephant house. Precisely, dear chap. And uh, when the murderer saw how the uh, problem of the missing elephant confused us, he killed its unfortunate keeper to prevent us from learning the truth. Yes, you're strangely silent, Mr. Singh. Am I, Mr. Holmes? I am fascinated by your flow of unassailable logic. Of course, uh, you realize that I am now the Maharaja, the King of Kings, an absolute ruler with all power, including that of the police. Do you, uh, do you care to denounce the murderer to me? Oh, come, come, sir. I think it's time the buttons came off our foils. I'm well aware that you studied medicine at the University of Edinburgh. You have the motive, the opportunity, and the knowledge to kill your brother. The murder of Sucro was probably performed by an underling. Great Scott, what a shocking... You are discreet. a clever man, Mr. Holmes. A very clever man. Clever enough to realize that an absolute ruler, a ruler with all powers, including that of the police, is not apt to denounce himself. Again, your logic is unassailable. Goodbye, gentlemen. I trust your voyage home will be a pleasant one. I warn you, sir, that I shall make a full report of my findings in this case to the British Commissioner for this state. Why should he prove more effectual than the great Sherlock Holmes? Goodbye, gentlemen, and above all else. murderer. Makes my blood boil to think that he can't be brought to justice. But he can, and he will be. Civilized laws of the Occident cannot be enforced here, then we must fight him with his own weapons. What do you mean, Holmes? That we have a farewell talk with Mr. Madder, the dead Maharaja's physician, friend, and counselor. <laughs> This is a terrible story you have told me, Mr. Holmes. My beloved ruler murdered by his own brother, and yet he cannot be made to account for his crimes. He can be, sir, if you will help Mr. Holmes. Of course I will. What can I do? 
Try and obtain the eye drops before they're destroyed, will you? Have them analyzed by a Western scientist and forward the reports to me in London. I'll take the necessary action. I will try to do that, Mr. Holmes. But if I fail, there is one other way I can avenge my master's death. In a few weeks, a new Maharaja will be enthroned. Ah. I understand you, sir. The wise man from beyond the mountains of Nepal will bring a new white elephant. Perhaps an elephant that will not live very long. You understand me perfectly, Mr. Holmes. I can promise you that the elephant will die in a very short time. And with it, the new Maharaja, my master, shall be avenged. <laughs> Quite a story, Doctor. Quite a story. And tell me, what did happen to the next white elephant of Harvard well, Port? by an extraordinary coincidence, it died the day after the new Maharaja's enthronement. And that scoundrel was himself killed in an uprising that occurred just a few days later. You know something? I think I could be very happy as an Indian Maharaja. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Beautiful palace, yeah. beautiful women, beautiful <laughs> jewels. And every year on my birthday, the natives would give me my weight in gold. Uh, you know, I could learn to like that. That is, if I tried. Yes, and every week you'd speak to your subjects over the radio and tell them all about Petri wine. Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Doctor. <laughs> I don't always talk about Petri wine. <laughs> That's right. You, you don't always talk about Petri wine. You, you've got to sleep sometime. <laughs> all right, go on. Kid me about it. But Petri wine is worth talking about. After all, what other wine has the tradition behind it that Petri wine has? Don't forget the Petri family has been making Petri wine for generations. Since way back before there were electric lights and telephones and things like that. They've been making Petri wine since the 1800s. And handing down from father to son, from father to son, every bit of valuable knowledge and experience. There's no doubt about it. The Petri family really knows how to turn luscious grapes into wonderful wine. That's why you can't go wrong with a Petri wine. Petri took time to bring you good wine. Well, Doctor, how's about giving us a clue to next week's story? Well, next week, Mr. Bartell, I'm going to tell you an adventure in which uh, I'm afraid I... <laughs> well, I didn't exactly cover myself with glory, shall we say. But I think you'll find the story an exciting one, my boy, because it's composed of equal parts of romance, of international intrigue, and of sudden death. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure is written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and is based on an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, The Engineer's Thumb. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Mr. Bruce through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, where they are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. This is Harry Bartell saying goodnight for the Petri family. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studios. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.